To all the geeks and nerds, welcome to another episode of Dissecting Minecraft. And today I'm joined, as usual, by Methods. And today we are the beauty and the beast of Minecraft. <laughs> you can, I'll leave it up to you to decide which one is which. But of course, I am the eye candy. <laughs> so anyway, this episode, uh, we are going to talk about this stuff, TNT. And this is going to be an explosive episode. All right, let's, uh, so yeah, let's, let's get into this thing. <laughs> so let's cover the very basics first. So TNT has a fuse time of 80 game ticks. That means four seconds. And mm -hmm. fuse time means from when you light a TNT to when it blows up. Right, so that's, so that's that time when it, when, it, when it starts flashing and it kind of turns into an entity, right? That's, that's exactly. 80 game ticks. And from there on, it takes 80 game ticks to blow up. Okay. There's a little difference though. If you do it with redstone or your flint and steel or your dispenser, it takes 80 game ticks. But there's also this mechanic where one TNT can light the next TNT. Oh, yeah. And that can take a random amount from 10 to 30 game ticks for the second piece of TNT. So you never want to use in your cannon, you never want to use TNT lighting up each other because it's a random amount of time between right. 10 and 30 game ticks. Okay. Okay, then we have the next feature, which that's my personal bane of all TNT. <laughs> and that is prime momentum. Okay. So if a TNT gets lit, Mm -hmm. It will random. It will jump upwards 0 0.2 blocks, right? And then it will pick a random direction to jump another 0 0.02 blocks, and that makes it in total it will jump 0 0.166 blocks horizontal if it doesn't get stopped by anything and it's sitting here on the ground. Right. It means it would jump upwards 0 0.2 blocks, and then it would pick a random direction and jump 0 0.166 blocks. Right. Some. You can also showcase this real quick. Let me turn off. Prime momentum. Right, so I should just I'll just remind everyone that we're obviously we've got carpet mod installed and that gives us some commands so we can we can stop uh, things like prime momentum as you're doing now and also we can stop uh, explosion damage, that kind of stuff as well. Exactly. So right now this TNT won't do any damage to anything, but we will be nicely able to see how it jumps and goes to the side. Actually I didn't turn it off. So <laughs> let's do that one more time. There we go. Now we saw it jump to the side here, and it's now at a random location. Okay, then one more basic thing. TNT has a blast effect range of seven blocks. And that means anything within those one, two, three, four, five, six, and this armor stand here, seven blocks, yep. can get destroyed by TNT. So if we just light this up here, we will see our armor stand getting destroyed. Yeah, and again, we just sort of jumped to the side there a little bit. Yep, and because it jumped to the side, we actually destroyed one more. So if we turn prime momentum back off mm -hmm. and put a piece of TNT here and our armor stand back, then this armor stand will never get destroyed. Well, I think actually this one will get destroyed. Yep, there perfect. We go. Awesome. And in that range, it's a little bit random because also TNT has a, some random factors how strong it is when it explodes. And of course, you have the prime momentum. But anything within that seven blocks range, if you use enough TNT, will get blown up at some point. Right. So it kind of sounds like if you want to do anything precise, you've got to deal with all the randomness uh, in some, some shape or form. Basically, with TNT, you always have to make it enough for it to work in the, in the worst case scenario. OK. Right. All right. So then we have a few blocks that are blast resistant. Hmm. So we have the ender chest, we have the enchanting table, we have our basic obsidian, we have end portal frames, and we have, of course, our liquids. Hmm. And so the question is probably, why does the, the enchanting table and the, the ender chest block explosion damage? Mm -hmm. And that's simply because they're not a full block. So they're two pixels smaller for the ender chest, for example. Hmm. Yep. And that means if we put a TNT on top of here and it falls down, it's basically inside of the ender chest, and the ender chest is made out of obsidian. Right. And the blast region of the TNT starts 1 16th up from the bottom in the center of the TNT. And therefore, therefore, the center of the explosion is basically inside of obsidian and therefore can't do any two blocks around. Okay, right. Makes sense. All right. Okay, then just for good measure, I added a super ghetto TNT cannon. Mm hmm. Just to show how it's done, basically we have a bunch of propulsion. Mm -hmm. That is here our, our power, how we call it. And we have one projectile. Okay. So this one piece of TNT here is going to be what's flying out. And this here is what's going to make our stuff fly. Okay. And here we pretty much just have a four game tick delay. That means we will shoot this piece of TNT. And after four game ticks of flight, it will pop up. 
Let's just quick do that. Well, <laughs> right, I think, can we, can we just see that one again? <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> oh, well. Wow. Right, so all of those TNTs that come out of the, out of the dispensers, they, they all fall down together and they're slightly before the one, the one that's going to get shot out. So they explode, shoot the other TNT up into the air and then that explodes later. Exactly. Basically, our projectile takes four game ticks of flight before it blows up. Right, so I've heard I've heard a term. Is that is that when we're doing this stuff with a TNT here? Is that called TNT compression, or is that something different? That's something different. That's used in cannons. So usually your cannon is a little bit bigger than that, mm -hmm. and you cannot just stack it infinitely upwards because you only have the four seconds. Ah, of course, right. So in a lot of setups, you basically do something like one second. Actually, do some live TNT cannoning. <laughs> That's what we like. <laughs> basically, we would stack something like this here. Mm -hmm. And of course, we would go up here and have even more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then our projectile would be somewhere around here on a slab. And of course, we want to get all of our power as close as possible to the projectile, simply right. because that defines how, how hard it's going to get accelerated. The closer it is, the better. And then all you do is basically you add another dispenser here, or let's say two, and you do this. And then we trigger this dispenser here. Mm -hmm. Two game ticks later, we trigger our main power here. And then after some whatever delay we need, we trigger our projectile. And this will pretty much just push all of the TNT uh, that we have here right in front of our projectile. Right. And that's a compression. Right, so I see. I see. So, so, so to beat that four seconds of delay, the, the, the four seconds of fuse time, you're using other TNT to squish it all together in, just in time. Exactly. It's just a, a matter one. of getting as much TNT as possible into a single one by one, as close yeah. as possible to your projectile. Yeah. And there's loads of different ways to do it and to stack it. Usually you don't need too much propulsion because you can stack those things here very high. And all. I mean, here alone we could go, I think, up to 60 dispensers here in this one row, and then we could set dispensers here on the side as well so we already would have 180 tnt right i guess i guess the important thing here is that all those dispensers have to fire at exactly the same time right exactly and we covered instant wires last time for example the bubble column instant wire really nice and tnt cannons no problem in doing that awesome perfect great okay but that's just the basic stuff it's not mm -hmm. too interesting to be honest <laughs> okay now let's <laughs> let's talk about the the real deal Okay. So how would you expect a TNT to fly if it's getting shot like here? Let's say this is our power mm -hmm. and this is our propulsion. Yeah, so I'd expect, yeah, just so you've got laid out in this glass, I'd expect that TNT like to be down here, like a, exactly. yeah, yeah, exactly. You yeah. would expect that it angle. to fly in a 45 degree angle, mm -hmm. yep. pretty much, and just land somewhere and blow up. Yep. But that's exactly how TNT does not work, simply because it's way harder to calculate from a coding standpoint. Okay. So what TNT actually does is it always prioritizes a Y value. It actually okay. flies up, flies over, and then renders here. Ah, right. Okay. And all of this happens inside one game tick. So the first time you see the TNT appear or blow up is here. Ah. It basically looks exactly the same as if it would fly in a 45 degree angle, but it's way easier to calculate and it makes for way cooler uh, game mechanics too. Okay, That's, that is interesting. Okay, right. Okay, so here I basically set the, the whole thing up. Mm hmm. So right. what we have here, basically, on this red block, we're summoning in 30 TNT as our propulsion. Right, we just got some command Power. blocks for that, right? Exactly, we're using command blocks now because it's just easier. Yep. And we have exactly one projectile on top of this trapdoor here. Mm, right. And there's a one game tick delay in between. Okay. So this here blows up, and one game tick later, this projectile blows up. Okay. Okay, so let's... Just check out what happens. Let me quickly adjust the command block. Right, yes. So it exploded. And we see, yeah. So even exploded though he has no blocks blocking it or anything, it's not getting forced into into flying over there. Also here's no blocks, so if it actually flew in a 45 degree angle, it should have just went outside of this thing here. Right. And it's just a simple proof that this is how it works. Okay. And also now for every game tick we add to our projectile now we can see it flying one more so-called triangle yep yeah so we went to the second one this time yeah yeah perfect and now one game tick more yes <laughs> wow 
That's awesome. <laughs> and the last game that I prepared, the very end. I, I didn't quite see that one. Can you just do that one more time? Go a bit closer, probably. Oh, yeah, maybe. Okay, go again. Yep, got it. Yep, right at the very end. Yep. Okay, that is the base of triangle stuff, which is super useful. We will get mm -hmm. into that in a second. Okay. And of course, that stuff doesn't only work on a basically 2D plane. It mm. also works 3D, and now it's oh, getting gosh. really tricky. That's also why I did not set up an example, because it's a ton of work to set it up. Uh -huh. Basically, it's the same thing as we did before, but mm -hmm. this time we also offset our power by one block to the side. Right. And now it's also becoming directional, mm -hmm. in which sites it prioritizes first. So basically, in the what are we looking east-west axis flies into negative z first. Okay. So basically, right here, the TNT goes up. Yep. Flies over negative x, negative z. And if you do it north-south, it actually flies over uh, negative z, negative x. Okay. So if so, just just as a as an so if if I was to uh, create a tube here. Would the TNT still make it across over here? Because it would, if in effect, fly through the tube. What type of tube, like the red? Uh, yeah, yeah. Same classy. Yeah, it would just perfectly fly through this. Oh, okay. And you could cover up, Lola. You couldn't. You could leave all the corners open. It would still by itself turn around here and turn fly around up. And fly. So it literally, so it literally does fly around corners. Yep. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. Then we have the next TNT behavior. It's kind of not really TNT behavior, it's based on tile tick priority. We will cover this in a special episode by itself again. All you really have to uh, think about is this basically update order, mm -hmm. and our comparator has a tile tick priority of zero, mm -hmm. and our repeater has a tile tick priority of minus one. Therefore, as we learned, for example, in the zero tick video, pulse generators, a repeater updates before a comparator in the same can achieve the same thing, by the way, by doing something like this here. We have exactly the same delays, but this signal here has to go to two repeaters, which is more than one repeater, and therefore it updates later. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. So what can we achieve with this? Now we actually have to turn on the explosion damage. We can do the so-called tunnel effect. Whoa. <laughs> Right, let's just see that so again. I've used about 10 TNT okay. and about, I think, 60 or 70 uh, propulsion. Huh? And we can pretty much move a TNT while it's blowing up. Right. So all of this happens in one game tick, and we deleted the whole row here. Wow. So normally, if you would just shoot at this, you would shoot at it, and five yeah. blocks would get destroyed, no mm -hmm. matter how much TNT you shoot at it. And then you would shoot again, and five blocks, six blocks would get destroyed, depending on your blast resistance of the blocks, of course. And this way, we can pretty much do it all in one game tick and shoot, for example, gigantic tunnels. Right. So let me just make sure I understand this. So we're shooting more than one TNT here, right? Yeah, we're shooting, shooting 10, 10 TNT. Shooting or 10 TNT, 50. right. And because of the update order, they're all blow, are they, they're blowing up just in the same game tick, but just one after the other. As they move yep. along this propulsion line. and uh, projectile actually are on the exact same delay, right. just on a different tactic priority. Right, and so that has the effect of right of blowing up the TNT individually, but separately along this line. Yep. Right. Okay. Awesome. Okay, and then of course we can use both of our behaviors we just learned, which is the mm -hmm. triangle stuff and the tactic priority, right. to create something like this here. So okay. here we just flipped our plane around. We're no longer doing it. Vertically, we're doing it horizontally now. Mm -hmm. So basically, our propulsion sits in this water here, yep. and our projectiles sit here. Okay, so it should. So we're. It's going to go in a forty-five degree angle, but it's going to go in a triangle. So it's going to go this way towards this piston, right? Exactly. And then it's going to go this way. Exactly. Okay. And that is another behavior. So if you have this triangle here, mm -hmm. yep, and you block it, it will pretty much just stop here, and then remember the rest of its momentum that's left. So it doesn't actually complete the full triangle because here we have enough power that our triangle would actually go up to here and then ah. start going over. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. But since we just blocked it, it will just start going over here. Oh, and then it would start going that. Oh, okay. Right. 
And this also nicely showcases that all of this happens in one game tick because our piston here will actually not get blown up at all. Okay, let's see it. So if we... Whoa! <laughs> this here, we can nuke this all out. Yep. And then we can just retract our piston. Yep. That's going to go to the next one. Oh, yes. So the next one. <laughs> Same thing again. Wow. And one last time that I've prepared. You missed the block. Yep, that <laughs> can survived. happen. <laughs> wow, that and is... of course, yet again, we could also do this with the 3D plane. Mm -hmm. So if our TNT would be summoned here, yep. one block up, then we could actually just have a next row of pistons here. I've shown this in a video before, basically, and you can make a, a whole area go away. Pretty much have a TNT cannon that can nuke a whole perimeter. Wow. That... That is a revelation, I must, I must admit. Right, so I think the next time I want to clear out a whole area, I might give this a go, because that is super cool. <laughs> wow. Okay, so here we have the next TNT behavior. Mm -hmm. Pretty much it's not really a TNT behavior, it's just how entities work in a world. Okay. So entities always get put into a list, and that list is perfectly ordered. Right. So what entities can be used with TNT? Of course, we can just shoot at players or mobs and just kill them, but we mm -hmm. can't really use them any further. The real entity we want to use is the falling block. The falling block is pretty much sand, concrete powder, gravel, mm -hmm. and anvils, and okay. dragon eggs. Right, yeah, okay. And those blocks all, depending on when they got created, get perfectly put in this list. So if we create okay. this falling block here, yep. it's our falling block number one. Right. And if we now take another one, a red one, it's our falling block number two, and right. so on. Of course. So it's a perfectly uh, even list. Okay, and those, those items then just all stack together, didn't they? They all stack together into the okay. same block, but yep. we can use this list behavior to completely sort them out. So basically here, we drop a bunch of concrete powder on top of this wall here. Yep. Therefore, they stay as a falling block and stay in, in their order. Mm -hmm. And then we launch a bunch of TNT up here mm -hmm. and retract the wall so they can actually start falling down. Right. And as you can see here, we're pretty much using a downwards triangle. And therefore, we can create, for example, a nice little pixel art using TNT. So here we go. Actually, I messed it up. We need to remove this block, drop our falling blocks all down onto this one thing. Yep. And there we go. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so as you can see here in this tower, for example, uh -huh. I've created this whole pixel art right. from our outside point here. So this is our first block. Yep. It's right here. Yep. And I've encoded pretty much this whole pixel art into this tower. And we just clone it on top of there, let it drop down, and we can shoot the whole thing. Right, so that tower goes along the bottom row, and then the second row up, and then the third row, etc. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. So basically, if we just take some signs, huh? here's our block one. Yep. And it just does this whole row here. Yes, yeah, so you can see. And so this is so this, our second row. Right, so this, this bit of red concrete here, this is the, the bottom of the mouth. Exactly. It's yeah. the bottom of the mouth. Yeah. And then here we can see the, the edge of the grin. Mm -hmm. And so on. There's our two eyes. Eyes up there. Yep, got it. Okay. And Brilliant. that's pretty much all there is to TNT. So with this knowledge, <laughs> you should be able to create your own cannons. You should be able to do your own pixel arts. <laughs> wow. Be able to use the tunnel effect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is so when we when I've seen things like uh, enderpearl cannons, you use this all of this the technology to be able to um, shoot an enderpearl into like into a really far a really far place. The enderpearl cannon pretty much just uses a ton of TNT compression mm -hmm. and really smart alignment systems. So mm -hmm. that's one thing you always have to keep in mind for all of this stuff. Now we just turned off the prime momentum. Right. If you mess in survival with your stuff, you have to deal with it in survival, which is super annoying. Right. So what, so what, what, has, what, are some, what are some techniques to, to, to get TNT to be aligned correctly? So what you can use, of course, is water. It mm -hmm. moves TNT, but it takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You can push it with a slime block. Cannot really do it with a normal piston since... We just turn off the damage real quick. Go. And we light this piece of TNT. You can see it can actually move it a little bit. Mm. 
because if we push it, it's fine. It gets pushed all the way to to the edge of the glass block. Yeah. But if we retract again, we pull it back a little bit, and it's not right. really reliable. So what you have to do is you have to push it with a block. Best is really with a slime block, so it even gets momentum into this direction and really hits the wall. Right. Okay. And other than that, what you of course can do is just if it doesn't has to be have to be a super precise cannon that shoots a, a one by one kilometers far away, you can just use enough and account for the for the randomness a little bit. Okay. All right. I've got to, got one more question. So when it comes to things like TNT dupers, so obviously we've seen seen things like world eaters, you know, flying machines that go along and uh, drop TNT and dupe it as it goes. What kind of what kind of mechanic does that? You how does how does the TNT actually get get uh, get uh, uh, duplicated? Okay, the the easy explanation that normal people do understand mm -hmm. is basically we have a butted piece of TNT. Mm -hmm. So let's quickly actually build a TNT duper or half of it. Let's take our wall here. Take the rail minecart. Mm -hmm. And now we just move this forward. We have a butted piece of TNT, so if we update this, it's gonna immediately start being lit. Yep. Let's set it up again. So, and then we basically use, for example, in 112, we used rails, which that got kind of broken, so now we use the dead coral. Right. And pretty much all the dead coral does, it provides an update to the block itself, to the TNT block. And basically, what, what's happening is the piston here starts moving. Mm -hmm. And then it creates a list of blocks that should appear where it is now. So basically, yeah. imagine the piston starting to move before yeah. it actually even starts finishing the movement. It already created the list where it says, "Stainless." Here is going to be a TNT. Mm -hmm. Of course, now it just updated because I placed it there. Yeah. But it basically creates a list and says, "Here is going to be a piece of TNT, a block." Mm -hmm. But also, and then it also says, wait, I have a butted piece of TNT that just got updated by moving it. And therefore it ignites it, but the list already exists that says here's going to be a TNT. Therefore oh, you see. basically duplicate an entity. Right, I see. Okay. That's the whole gist to it. So pretty much everything else around those TNT dupers is just there to provide the correct update, correct order. Right, I see. Awesome. Right, yeah, makes, makes sense. Yeah, great. And if you want an, an in-depth explanation to that, I think Myron Irio has a 27-minute video about how TNT duping actually works. Okay. Because there's a, a lot more technical stuff to it that no one really understands. So <laughs> okay. I, I spare you from that one. <laughs> I think I think that I think that that explanation was uh, was a uh, pretty good for for, for me at least. <laughs> nice one. So that's about it for this episode. The episode that has gone off with a bang. But I think we've got a bit of a challenge this week. Methods is that right? Oh yeah, I want to see what you guys can come up with. I want to see TNT cannons. I want to see explosions mm -hmm. and stuff being blown up. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, even useful things like 2D printers, <laughs> yeah. tunnel cannons, yeah. perimeter clearing machines. What was your usage for TNT? Because in my opinion, TNT is the, the second most usable block in the game after pistons. Mm -hmm. You can do so much with it. There's much, much more than what we just showed today. There's much more than just blowing up your, your friend's castle. And <laughs> yeah, of course, TNT is a lot of fun. Everyone loves blowing stuff up. So yeah, so uh, go, go and create something, go crazy, and then uh, show us what you got, and we'll, we'll show the best ones uh, next week. And so if you enjoyed the episode, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any comments or suggestions or any kind of feedback, then get it in that comment section. All right, my geeks, until next time, I will see you later.